Hello, hello, my dear friends. Welcome to Listen Dot Electronic, and today we have yet another smart plug. This one was actually accidentally observed in Home Depot Canada, and I think it's. Uh, was about $8.99 or something to this extent. So it was inexpensive for... I would say this inexpensive. And then we're gonna take a look at this particular one. I wanna see if it's worth $8.99 or not. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing really special. It's just Wi-Fi, you know, timer and app controlled, obviously. There's also another interest uh, here, just to see with what app this thing could be compatible. Unfortunately, right here, I do not see the um, the wattage this thing can handle. So that can be a surprise for us, because it can be pretty wimpy, but maybe not. Um, so looks like the name of this thing is Smart Plug One, SP1. Very original name I must say. It's a bit dirty because probably was sitting there on the shelf for a while. So let's, uh, you know, we're gonna start uh, with trying to pair this thing with the already existing app I have and then we'll proceed with tear down. So guys stay with me and let's see what the heck is this. So let's first do unboxing. So packaging is pretty simple, nothing too fancy, very basic packaging. There are two pieces of paper here. The guide, maybe there is some specs, it will be listed here. It is... Well, it says it supports 15 amp, so that's good. No, I'm reading French, but I still know a few words in French. Okay, so it's um, 60 Hz, 15, 15 amp, 15 amp maximum load. Doesn't say it has to be resistive, inductive, whatever. 15 amp maximum load. That's all probably we need to know. Ah, another very important thing: this thing supports only 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi, so no, no 5 gigahertz, unfortunately. Okay, well, that's probably it. This is probably how to connect it. This is plastic, it's kind of very interesting payance paper. Alrighty, uh, okay, so looks like there is a line here, we can open it just by squeezing something in. And But before we do that, we're gonna try to connect it. Alright, I have prepared here's main cord, main cord, of, obviously we need to have one with ground pin and polarized thing. Well, you have ground pin, not necessarily, you not, there is no necessity to have a polarized these two guys, but it's uh, actually not, but... Alright, so here we are, I'm gonna use my kilowatt meter to actually, which is not super handy, monitor the, uh, you know... Um, power factor and also some other things we would like to know. Oops, yeah, this cord is very tough. Well, it, there is some signs of life. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this app I have here, it's called, oh, I have to log in, called Smart Life. They, that's the app from one of the devices um, I used I, uh, I used to buy in Costco. So let's let me log in and I'll continue. I am successfully logged in and let's add device. Add device. A hey, location. Fine. I love. Jeez, like this app looks like it was reinstalled. Okay. Sockets and stuff. I honestly don't know. I'm just guessing here. Socket, Wi-Fi, I guess. Here is my Wi-Fi. I'm gonna provide the password of screen. That's not the right password. Okay, and it's, it suggests me to power off device. For 10 seconds, okay. I think it has been 10 seconds, so thank you very much. Next. Reset button for five seconds. I don't know, okay, it is blinking. Blinking slowly. Mm 
Okay. Let's see if it has service hotspot. No, it doesn't. No, it does. Okay, it's a smart plug. Is connected. Okay, it is connected. What now? It looks like we we're not gonna have success to connect to this particular app. Um, all right, guys. So there is a probably. A failure here looks like this device will never be connected to this smart home application it just doesn't want to connect unfortunately so this essentially means they have to install their uh, original application and the most annoying things that they have to register it I am I don't like this so I'm not gonna do this so we will stop here and we proceed to tear down uh, I'm pretty sure this thing is easy to set up with the original application and you can do what you want What I gonna do I gonna take it apart and see if I can flush it with the custom firmware Tasmota or something to this extent, but for now, let's take a look at the uh, electrical um, Characteristics, so this is our power factor which actually pretty shitty like 39 something or it jumping around looks like it's uh, sometime 50 right it's 45 here or here we are so this is not good that's just a shitty power factor let's see it consumes one watt I'm just curious this is taking account power factor or not 2.3 VA all right and that's pretty much it so here we you know so power factor is sucks one watt and 2.1 VA can just shut it down for now so here is my another favorite tool what are you gonna do I typically bash around on the perimeter like this like here you know and the glue or whatever plastic some kind can be glued sometimes it can be ultra sonic welded it just breaks off so I gonna do this off camera to you know um to make sure people are not getting offended of me bashing this little guy and turn out to be it is pretty easy to open it up so what i've done i took something like that and then i jammed it in here right like this and turn it this way essentially then freeing one of these and obviously broke this one and then just following this crack line over here and open it and keep doing this so yeah this kind of spoon shaped um pry tool is very handy in this particular case anyway so tada here we are that's neat it just complete pass through so there is no electrical connection to the grounding thing here so yeah just just a path through all right let's just unscrew one more screws here what else they have to where's oh yeah there's another one two screws and let's take a look what do we have all right mm-hmm pretty beefy terminals here so this thing's supposed to handle 15 amps and let's check our relay and relay is stated 10 amps 220 Mm, uh, 277 VAC and 15 amps 125 VAC that's all right doesn't really say at what voltage the thing operates yeah it's like uh, really hard to say it's not 12 volt I don't believe okay let's um, see what else we have here so we have this uh, what to say 
L W K 32 F whatever it is. Uh, it's probably board name. You, you see already uh, square C pinouts here S C K S D A and we have T X one R X one. We have T X zero R X E zero A D C. So yeah, all this jazz is is right in here. Some kind of I I O one. And um, everything is actually um, st stated, labeled right on here. So looks like this is the gist, the edge connector, and just solder it right in the in the slot right here, which is which is actually well done. We have another board which consists of just a button right here, and looks like few resistor and LED. So this is LED which actually shines the light, depends on the mode. Unfortunately, because this construction, we don't see the SOC right there. So SOC is just right there. So either I have to unsolder this board, which is probably super easy, uh, using the hot gun, or, or, or I search Maybe someone already figured that this out. So this is something. Let's just, let's just unsolder it. Why not? Then this is there is a power supply side of the business. So obviously this is fusible resistor. This is the filtering inductor straight on input, right? Is it? Yeah. Two main um, smoothing capacitors. Two, interesting that you have two of them. Each of them is 130 uh, C rated, that's actually good to see. And they are 250 volt, 4.7 microfarads. I think there are two of them like that, yes. That's interesting because this device is not supposed to support 220 uh, volts, but looks like technically it can work because the input capacitors are... Uh, yeah, maybe not, because there is no switch between, so anyways. Um, not sure what's missing here. I would say this is the the um, is this m m missing some kind of component or this is the spark gap? What the heck is this? This missing optical? Oh, no, this is more look like a spark gap. Yeah, it is. It is like a spark gap. That's interesting. Look at this, it's very interesting. I think it, it is even metalized right down there. I know, really hard to, sh to show you. Mm, that's cool. All right, then we have a... What is the bridge rectifier? Where's the pressure rectifier? I don't get it. Wait a second. Is this diode is the only bridge rectifier? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have one diode bridge rectification or one diode rectification, two capacitors, smoothing capacitors. Now I understand why there have to be two. So they decided to cheese out on diodes and put more capacitors. Very interesting solution. Uh, one diode is going to be pretty. Yeah, like like this uh, kind of shape um, uh, rectification and then two capacitors gonna smooth it out. We don't have any transformer here. We have a, a special chip which actually does the switching and regulation. That's it. So this uh, transformer less non-isolated -isola uh, um, power supply looks like this is... Is this the 3 volt? Yeah, this is 117, I think, A, really hard to see. This is, oops, this is 3, I think 3.3 .3 volt regulator right here. And we have capacitor, AC brand, all of them, by the way, AC branded. And 6.3, 470 microfarad. So, so this device probably produces, there are probably two more diets. One of them can be Zen or something. Um, so yeah, I'm curious what kind of voltage this device provides for this voltage regulator and this voltage regulator outputs 3.3 volt only one smoothing capacitor right here. So here is the second one not populated uh, Yeah, and uh, some resistors are not populated as well. I'm not sure what this about 
we can have another diode and this diode is highly likely in is for the relay and we have another transistor actually yeah this is to prevent some um, how do you call this back back inductance and this one uh, from the coil and this one is to actually drive a relay by the um, uh, micro microcontroller itself potentially unregulated voltage from this controller goes from this a uh, primary side uh, regulation chip goes straight to the on this transistor to drive the relay let's say 12 volt and after that we have this uh, or whatever 6 volt I don't really it's really hard to see what kind of voltage this relay work doesn't really say even here actually I don't see it yeah well, let's say 12 volt yeah I can just search to see if this HF3FF relay is uh, what kind of yeah doesn't say here mm -mm. doesn't say voltage that's weird uh, go straight to this transistor and transistor driven by microcontroller and uh, then it goes to regulator and probably Xanarish just to stabilize voltage I guess something to this extent um, interestingly enough that's the only function this thing do this microcontroller drives these transistors that's pretty much ah, well, probably drives the LED as well yeah that's pretty but it can drive LED straight off to, out of the microcontroller that needs a special transistor for that and reads the button yeah that's another function of the microcontroller the rest of them is mostly the um, uh, yeah, yeah, how do you call it? Um, Wi-Fi connectivity. Um, yeah, I don't really see any sort of antenna unless those two lines is a antenna, and I think there is a possibility to connect a little connector and uh, solder a little connector right here. I think this is the one. Yeah. Well, I'm so tempted to actually unsolder this board to see what kind of microcontroller is there. Mm -hmm. So here is the RxDx, EN, I don't know, it's enabled, I guess, FAC, I'm not sure. Cool. Yeah, it doesn't look, doesn't look like any of these actually depicting the microcontroller. Um, hmm, hmm. Uh, let me quickly unsolder it. Okay guys, so I did some uh, research around and here what we got here, so some, this is the components which consist, which, uh, which this um, module consists of. Let's start from the probably the main and most interesting component which is RTL8710BX. So this is uh, Wi-Fi SOC essentially, which is running a AU211BGN, 2.4 MHz only, 32 bit low power, runs at 3.3 volt. Um, unfortunately, this guy is incompatible not with Tasmota, not with ESP Home, because apparently company who uh, used to, you know, mo how to say, which is a prototype for all these uh, boards, decided to switch design from ESP to this RTL chip. And essentially, you know, maybe eventually someone would create some kind of firmware to run on this RTL chip, but this we have what we have. Uh, and then we have this tiny chip right here, which is BYQ16B, 16 megabit display flash memory from Boya Microelectronics. This is obvious mm, mm, designation because definitely we need this PI, uh, sorry, flash chip right on this board. Well, there is a 40 megahertz resonator right there, tiny thingies. So let's go back to the main board. On the main board, we have no, no the, this little guy over here which is voltage regulator which is BP2525 and known as isolated step down constant voltage driver it has ability to be uh, uh, configured uh, for either 5 volt or 3 volt output I thought at first it runs at 3 volt but no I'll tell you why no it actually I believe it not I believe I'm pretty sure it runs at 5 volt because we have triple one seven a um, three volt one amp LDO right here, right. So this definitely is to run this jazz, and five volt is to run 
these jaws because this relay is HF3FF005 which actually defines the switching voltage. So the coil here is designed for 5 volt and uh, one HTF is some kind of designation here the sub-miniature power relay 5 volt operation and this one H actually stand for 15 amp rated so maximum switching current of this relay is 15 amp this is according to official data sheet that sheet actually looks pretty good looks like not uh, kind of relatively decent relay not how um, some high uh, some kind of one hand low kind of jazz uh, so and company I think called Honfa or something to this extent hence the little HF right here uh, on the on the on the body so that's pretty much it so the, the component tree looks here okay capacitors are okay as I mentioned and um, uh, all this stuff seems to be uh, relatively well designed by the way I just figure <laughs> notice very interesting solution so if you want for example to run this um, switching thingy without center pin without grounding pin which is probably not the good idea you can just omit it you know like just assemble it oops just assemble it like this and uh, and and that's it but i mean it's obviously the safety hazard so yeah if you if you um definitely gonna use some high power device it's better to have the grounding pin here but obviously grounding pin is not taking um, any role in this circuitry uh, also very important thing this is um, non-insulated uh, driver so that means that all low voltage stuff is still can be exposed to mains through some grounds and things like that so that means that cannot be this this chip cannot be used in USB power supply and to power any electronics which has human contact with it but in this scenario you can use it because when it's sealed like that that's it you're not touching anything except these prongs and these prongs you're not even touching them this is essentially for your uh, device under low or device your kitchen appliance or whatever all right so now it's probably uh, time to put it all back together and see if it works I have to solder this unit back maybe I'll think about it maybe maybe I won't solder it you know what guys I'm not gonna solder it you know why because I can try I can try to actually connect to serial uh, provide some 3.3 volt right here figure out where is the voltage and connect it to serial so probably we're gonna have part two of this video where I try to poke around with this little uh, device and see what we can do so yeah let's stop at this and continue later so guys thank you for watching thank you for staying with me if you like my video please like and subscribe and yeah stay safe and ciao see you next time